Okay, we left off in lecture number eight with our fine specimen screen. We can't move forward here until we actually have a fine specimen activity. And so that's what we'll work on next. First, we have to be smart about our activity. We know we already have this location finder which extends from activity. Now we're going to make another activity. It's a good idea if we have a lot of classes like this to make maybe an intermediate superclass of these activities so that we can put common logic like menu functions in that superclass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, choose refactor, and choose extract superclass. This simply inserts a layer between our location find finder and the superclass activity. Okay, So I choose extract superclass and Eclipse gives me a wizard and says, okay, are there any methods I want to extract to the superclass? Not yet. No, nothing yet. So I'm simply going to give it a name, plant places activity. And let's see what gets created. This is one of the nice parts about Eclipse, all the refactoring tools like this. When you work in a heavy duty industrial application, you really get to appreciate refactoring tools like this. So I choose finish. And now let's see what's different. Now location finder no longer extends activity. It extends plant places activity. I click up into here and here's our plant places activity. Eventually we'll add our menus and things like that to this activity. But for the moment, what we want to do is we want to create a new layout and create a new activity to associate with it. Let's start with the layout. I'm going to go to Res and then Layouts folder. I'm going to right click on Layout. I'm going to choose New, and I realize this is off screen. New Android XML file. And then the wizard appears. I'll drag this back on screen. Uh, what do I want? I want a layout. Uh, I'm going to do, this time, I'm going to do a scroll. See if I can find it. A scroll view. Now, remember I said that layouts are XML based. And each layout has to have a root element or an element that starts and finishes that layout. Scroll view is an example of a layout where the root element is scroll view. What's interesting about scroll view is it allows our layout to actually, guess what, scroll. The only trick is a scroll view can only have one child. A scroll view can only have one thing inside of it. The good news is that one thing can be a whole other layout, like a table layout. So we'll play around with this a little bit. The file name, I'll call it, uh, let's just call it, say, plant search. Uh, that should be fine, plant search. So this is the screen where we're going to enter our search criteria for a plant. When I'm happy with that, I simply choose finish. And remember, if we go back and look at our PowerPoint, and I'm talking through the PowerPoint now, um, I'm talking through the PowerPoint at the moment, uh, but this is the layouts PowerPoint. This is the one we want to make. And what we're going to do here is we're going to nest a table layout within a scroll view. Okay, so we start with a table layout. A table has rows. We saw this already on our, we, we saw this already on our um, uh, location finder, our save specimen screen. Here's a screen capture of where I can drag a table row and add it to a table layout to give myself multiple rows. We're going to do all of this within a scroll view so that not only will we have a table, but we'll have a table that scrolls. Okay, so uh, back to the live demo then. Okay, here we go. Now this is a little bit tricky because I have to start squeezing a bunch of things onto my, my tiny uh, screencast-o-matic here. I could make screencast-o-matic bigger, by the way. Uh, then the file sizes would be that much bigger and they'd take that much longer to download. So I try to make do with one that's big enough but not too big. I click on the Layouts folder and we see here there's a table layout. Over on the right side we see the scroll view which represents what is currently within my layout. And if I click on Plant Search XML, we can take a look at the XML 
uh, that is behind this layout. There we go. Not a whole lot yet. Okay. I go back to the graphical layout builder. I click on table layout and I drag him and place him right on scroll view, which means that under scroll view, there's going to be a table layout. A table layout can contain rows. So I'm going to grab, just like I had that screen capture in PowerPoint, I'm going to place uh, several table rows in this table layout. Okay, And that's going to give me the capability to do my search screen. Okay, We'll keep going, and we keep going, and we keep going, okay, and we keep going. And, and we can certainly add more later. I'm going to add several now. We can certainly add more later. And remember that our goal is to make a screen that looks like this. So we're going to want genus with our autocomplete text, species, common name, category, then a set of checkboxes, then a set of radio buttons. So let's start with the first one. Let's start with genus. I'll put a text view, which we know is just a label. I'll right click and I'll choose edit text. Uh, we don't already have a label for genus, so I'll do new string. I'm going to call this LBL genus, which means just a label, genus. The value will say genus and then a colon, like so. And then I choose OK and OK. OK, I grab another text view. I'm going to put it in the second row for the second text view. Uh, edit text. We don't need to do anything with this programmatically. We'll leave the IDs as they are. This one will say species. OK, so string species and then a colon new r string lbl species and okay so genus and species okay cornus florida is an example cornus is the genus florida is the species okay next one i think we decided we wanted uh cultivar or common name what did we say for that we probably should have both a uh, common name that's fine we'll just deal with common name so right click I uh, know we don't need to change the ID. We'll simply change the text. Okay. And we'll say new string. And we'll say here cultivar. Okay. New R string LBL cultivar. And okay. Okay. And now we're going to add a new text view. And this was category. Okay. So, once again, new string. I know this is getting old hat. We'll get into some new material here in a second. String category. Our, uh, LBL category. Okay. Category. Let's start that one over. And there we go. Okay. Now what we need to do is start to explore some of the advanced view components. So I'm going to go to the presentation called Advanced View Components. These are things that are typically data-driven, data selectors, for example, uh, that help us to reduce typing by helping the user enter data by giving a predefined list of some kind. That predefined list is going to come through via an adapter. An adapter, in this case we'll use an array adapter, is basically a collection of data that we're feeding to this advanced view component. In other words, consider autocomplete text. The user will start typing, and as the user type, it's going to try to complete based on a list of known items. This array adapter that we're feeding it is that list of known items. On the next screen capture, we see I start typing A and B, and it pops up with ABs as a suggestion. So that's what we're going to try and do with the autocomplete text. The trick is we have to have some data to give to this through its array adapter. And that's where we're going to take advantage of this concept of an interface and a stub class that implements that interface. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll look at that and we'll look at spinner which is related to spinners like a drop down also works on the same adapter principle. So this is what we're going to look at in this example. To wire up these adapters we're going to need an activity. So let's go ahead and start adding some of these advanced view components to our layout and then let's define the activity. We'll start with the screen that we already have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this autocomplete 
from the form widgets and I'm going to drop it next to genus in the very first row. It's a little tricky given that we have so many rows. So look carefully where the orange is and we drop it and also take a look to make sure it appears next to genus in the outline view. Okay, I'm going to want to go ahead and change the ID. We'll change it to ACT genus and I will change the text, make it blank. We probably also want to give it a weight, which will basically tell it, if we just give it any weight, it will tell it to consume the entire right side of the screen. So, uh, properties, and I know this is going to go, this is going to be off screen a little bit. Okay, layout weight, and I'm going to give it a layout weight value of 1. Because I didn't give the label a weight value, the one just consumes whatever's left over in that row. Species, take an edit text and drop that in there. As always, edit the ID, EDT species. We could do an autocomplete for species, but we'll keep it simple for now. And OK, and right click and edit text, and again, change this to blank. Give it a layout weight, right click properties, uh, and we'll go down. Again, I know this is off screen kind of a lot here. Layout weight, give it a value of 1. Cultivar, okay, and drop, and right click, edit ID, EDT cultivar. All of this will feed our search screen, and okay. Right click, edit text, blank again. Right click, properties, choose layout weight, and again, change this to 1. Category, we're going to want a spinner, so we'll grab, whoop, Put that in the wrong place. We'll grab the spinner, drop that down in category. We see with the drag and drop, it's really quite simple. Right click, and we'll choose Edit ID, and I'll choose SPN Category. Okay. And right click, Properties. Okay, scroll down. Okay, Layout Weight. Make that a 1, and we're all set. At this point, we should be happy with where we all or I'll go ahead and hit save. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save all. Okay, now we need our activity. We need our activity that we can wire up to this. And why is that? Because in an activity, the first method to be called is going to be on create, which is kind of like a constructor or an initialization method. And that is where we can populate genus, species, and cultivar, I'm sorry, genus and category with information. So. I come over, we'll keep it in the same package, com plant places UI. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new class. And I'm going to call this class plant search activity. Super class, this used to confuse me like crazy when I started using Eclipse because I wanted to put a super class in here. So I choose browse and what I want is plant places activity, but we see it doesn't show up in the list reason why it doesn't show up in the list is it pre-populated something here which is causing some filter text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete what is in that filter area and I'm going to replace it with plant places activity. Or if I want a shortcut, I can use only the capital letters and go PPA. There we go. Select that. And now the plant search activity is going to extend from the common plant places activity which then extends from Android's activity. And I choose Finish. Okay, Plant Search Activity, we see not a whole lot here. One thing I want to do is typically I'll put a copyright at the top. Copyright plantplaces.com 2012 and we'll typically have a standard block we'll put up there. And then right before the class we'll put uh, this class, well, well, we don't, that's kind of redundant. Enable searching of plants by several search criteria. Don't forget to put the Java doc commenting in. We see there's a special tag called author. Don't forget to put that in so that your class has a purpose. The worst thing we can have are these large, ambiguous classes with several thousand lines that don't have a purpose. The comment should clearly state what the purpose of the class is, what's in scope for this class. Okay, now we're here and we have a very simple looking class because there are no methods in it. 
And we know there's that one method, what's it called? The method that we use to initialize everything on the screen. It's called onCreate or something or other, and we need to override that method. Once again, Eclipse has a very handy tool. Uh, I can press Control and O, and then Control O one more time, and it will show me all methods of the super class. I know that that method was called create something or other, so I type in star create, and it shows me all methods that I can inherit. In other words, all methods of the super class that have that word create. Okay? Once I see this, oh, that's right, it's on create. Once I see that, I can start typing on C. I just start typing the method name. I hold down control and I hit the space bar. And what it says is, oh, I see, you probably want to override a method. Which one do you wish to override? I'll keep typing because there are several that start like this. And sure enough, it's the method on create that I wish to override. Boom, and there we go. So if we want to override a method from a superclass, we can simply start typing that method name and then hold down control and press space and it will allow us to select a method and it will automatically override that method. One very important thing it will do is it will also add this at override annotation. Keep that. It's very important to keep that because should the superclass method ever change its signature, this override annotation will let us know through a compile error. And then that way we'll know to go back and update our own stuff. Okay? So, uh, here we go. We are in a method where we can specify what layout we want to attach to this activity. And also, we can pull views off of that layout. Okay? To associate a layout with this view, we'll say set content view. And if I guess right, I'll do control O, control O again, make sure I got it right. Okay, uh, set content view. Yes, that's what I need. And I'll say R dot layout, and then the name of my layout. Uh, Android was kind enough to make for us a constant for our, locate, our location plant search, our uh, layout, sorry, our layout called plant search. So here, we are associating the plant search layout with this activity. Now we can start to initialize the different components. And we know the two that we're interested in are the autocomplete text and the spinner. The others we've seen before. So at this point, we're interested in the autocomplete text and the spinner. So remember our friend find view by ID which will allow us to send in a constant and will return to us the view or the widget on that form that is associated with that constant. We get the constant from r.id and then we'll say autocomplete text genus. Whoops, wrong one, sorry. ACT genus for autocomplete text genus. Okay, uh, we will cast, we'll try, let me try this again, autocomplete text See if we can do a cast here. I know it's going to get mad at me. Um, yeah, that's not going to work. Let me control one. Doesn't like that either. Okay, well, all right, we'll do it the old fashioned way then. We'll simply say control one. Oh, come on. Find view by ID. Why are you mad at me again? There, that's what I want. Okay, assign statement to new field. Okay. Now, I'm going to tap, we're going to call this, we're going to call this one ACT Genus. I'm going to hit tab a few times. We're going to try something different. When I hit tab, it takes me up to the field, or as we call them, attributes, the attribute that it created. It created this as a view. View is a superclass of autocomplete text. In other words, autocomplete text is a subclass of view. So I'm going to change this to autocomplete text text and enter and now that worked but it's mad at me it doesn't know what autocomplete text is so I'm gonna hold down control shift and press O which automatically does imports I still didn't find it okay 
Um, should it be auto complete text view? I don't think so, but it might be. Let me double check. One second. Okay, I stand corrected. I double checked my source. It should be auto complete text view. Sounds like a long name, but okay. Control Shift O this time finds it. Okay, I just I just mistyped it. Now we have a red line here because find view by ID returns a view, the superclass type, and we're trying to save it in the subclass type ACT genus. So I'll click on the red line, hold down Control and press one. And we can simply choose Add Cast. And there we go. Okay, let's do the same thing for our spinner. Find view by ID. And I'll say r.id.spn category. I just saw it there. SPN category. Okay, there we go. And now I'll Control 1. And I'll say Assign to New Field. We'll do the same steps as before. We're going to call this SPN category. Okay, and then I'm going to change it to spinner. I believe it's called spinner, but I could be wrong. Okay, I'll hit enter to confirm everything I just entered. Control Shift O to automatically organize imports. This time I got the name right. And we see once again, find view by ID returns the super type view. We need to cast it down to a spinner. So I put my mouse cursor there, hold Control and press 1, and I say add cast to spinner and I save. Once I have my spinner in my autocomplete text, what I can do is I can assign to them a, an array adapter, which essentially feeds it with data. For an array adapter, I need three arguments. A context, which is the screen that we're currently on. Text view resource ID, don't worry too much about that. That means how do we want to present the data, one line at a time typically. And then a collection of objects. This is the part that we need to focus on, is the collection of objects. So uh, I could say, for example, ACT genus dot set adapter, new array adapter, string, open paren this comma android dot r dot layout dot simple Let's see if I can get this right on the first try simple drop down item one line so a little, little bit verby but we're saying we're just giving one line at a time and then I could provide it with a string array of items that I want to be in this autocomplete it's very tempting to hard code this here, but that's very old school. Okay, it's very old school to hard code. We know we can do better. We know that we can use interfaces and stub classes instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to save. Just comment out that adapter. We'll come back to that. I'm going to save. Uh, I'm going to go now to uh, our Android application. Currently, under source, we only have one package, and that is com.plantplaces.ui. It's time now to make our service layer or our business logic layer. Um, actually, you know, we could just jump straight to the DAO. That's really not a good idea, but uh, I suppose we could if we wanted. So, okay, not a big deal. Uh, I'll right click and choose new, and this time I'm going to choose package. And for the package, I'm going to say com.plantplaces. We'll go ahead and say service. We can always refactor this later. com.plantplaces.service. And I choose finish. Okay. Under com.plantplaces.service, I'm going to right click now and say new and then interface. Okay. And I'm going to name this iPlant service, like so. And then I'll choose finish. Okay. Remember that an interface simply has method signatures and constants. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give this a comment and say an interface for uh, logic involving plants. I'll keep it pretty simple to start with. What I'm going to say now is uh, public, I'll define, I'll define a, a method here, public list string fetch all genus okay 
public list string fetch all categories. There will probably be many more uh, methods to go here, and we probably should think about what some of those are. Fetch all plants, for instance. Save plant. Fetch species for plant. Uh, save species. Things like that. We'll start off simple, though. We'll start off with just fetch all genus and fetch all categories. When you do work on your project, you're going to want to think about all the different methods that you might use. Now, what is a list? A list is an interface that ArrayList implements. We usually, remember, like to work in interface types when possible. Now, we do have to import this, but we know in uh, Eclipse that Control-Shift-O will automatically organize imports. And sure enough, there we go. There's our import. Many times we'll put it, we'll, we'll javadoc comment these methods in an interface, and as long as we have the javadoc here, we won't worry as much about commenting the actual implementation. So I'll put a comment here fetch all genus for a given, uh, not fetch all genus, really that's all, fetch all genus. Return a collection of all genus. Okay. Fetch all categories, fetch all plant categories, return all plant categories. There we go. And this is what's going to feed our spinner and our autocomplete text. Now remember, we'll typically start with the interface and then we'll implement a stub. We'll hand that, I'm playing the role right now of the persistence person. So we'll hand off this stub to the UI person and say, work with this. Meanwhile, the persistence person will continue to work on an actual implementation of the, uh, uh, of the interface. So what I'll do now, under com.plantplaces.service, I'm going to right-click, choose New in Java Class. Again, com.plantplaces.service, right-click, New Class. This one I'm going to call plant service. Super class of object is fine. For interface though, I'm going to add iPlant service. And what that means is that this class plant service must implement iPlant service, which means it must provide implementation for all of the methods in iPlant service. And I choose finish. And here we go. It creates a class plant service that implements iPlant service. From here, all we need to do is give definition to these methods. For fetch categories, it'll be fairly simple. Let's go to the real plant places now and look at the search screen. Okay, I'll go to search plants. And category, vine, shrub, shrub tree, evergreen shrub, tree, evergreen tree, annual, perennial, grass fern. That'll give us something to go with. Genus contains, I'll put AB, we'll see Abelia, Abies, Abutilon, that'll give us something to work with. Okay, so we go back for categories, this will be pretty sim simple. We'll simply say array list all categories equals new category, uh, equals new, sorry, array list. Remember, the stub is simply giving us predictable output. Now, something we can test against, for instance. So, we're hard coding now, but eventually we'll pull this from the database. Also, for an array list, we will typically use generics to specify what data type we're storing. In this case, we're storing string. Okay, we move this over so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, I'm also going to change the comments and say create a collection to store our default list of categories. Okay, control shift O to implement to uh, import array list. Now all categories dot add. Uh, let's see, we said shrub. Okay. All categories dot add tree. We'll seem deciduous there. All categories, add, evergreen, 
all categories, add. Uh, what else do we have? Annual, all categories, add, perennial, all categories, add, grass, all categories, add, fine. Okay, and there we go. That will give us something to start with, and then we'll finally return, return the collection of categories. Okay, return all categories. Okay, uh, fetch all genus will do something very similar. Array list string all genus equals new array list string open and close print semicolon all genus dot add abs all genus dot add a view till long. I need a few that start with the same two letters so I can test out the autocomplete. All genus dot add. Um, a B's a butylon, and what was the other one we had? A B's a butylon, and uh, well, let's see, we'll go back to plant places and ask. Abelia. Abelia. Okay, and then we'll add a few more. I needed a few that start with the same two letters. Now we can add a few more. All genus dot add amylanchier. Okay, all genus dot add amer. All genus dot add acer, so on and so forth. And then return all genus. And there we go. Okay, and save. Now, I have my iPlant service and my plant service defined. What I can do now is I can go back to my, uh, to my plant search screen and I can implement these in my spinner and autocomplete. What we can do in the plant search activity is we can define a field of type, guess what? Think about this now. What data type do we want to declare our plant service? We definitely want to declare it as an interface, and this is what I'm going to look for on your programming assignments and on your final group project. So, I plant service, plant service. Why is an interface? Because remember, at some point, we're going to replace that stub with the actual implementation. Control Shift O to organize imports. Now on the on create, I can put a line here to say initialize the plant service. Because remember the on create is kind of like a constructor. Plant service equals new plant service. Here is where we define the class that we're going to use to store in that variable. And I'm sorry, you know what? I called it plant service. I just realized I made a mistake. I should call that plant service stub. I'm going to come over here. It's easy to change a name. I'm going to come over here, right click, refactor, rename, and I'm going to call this plant service stub. The actual implementation will call plant service. And finish to refactor. Uh, okay. Just double check, make sure. Yep, that's good. As a matter of fact, it already noticed what I started to do. So I choose finish, and there we go. Okay, plant service stub. I choose save. Now I need to organize imports, tell it to go out and find plant service stub, and we're all set. Now, when, now I'm playing the role of the UI developer. When the persistence developer comes back and says, okay, I'm finished with the actual implementation, you can replace plant service stub with the real plant service. This is the only line I need to change to go from the stub to the actual implementation. So I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to uncomment the set adapter. And remember, for an array adapter, we need to provide it with a context and then some constant that represents how do we want this to be represented. And we're saying one line at a time. 
and then I need to give it an actual collection of data. And for this, I'll say plant service. Let's see, and this one is our genus. And I'll invoke the method fetch all genus. Finally, we'll terminate this line with a semicolon. Also, we need to do a control shift O so that it can find array adapter. And we're all set. Let me add some comments here to that effect. Get a reference to the auto complete text. Okay. Populate the auto complete text values from the plant service. We're not going to say whether it's the stub or the implementation. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's going to be defined only by this one line up above here. That's it. Okay. Do the same thing for spinner. SPN category. I'll say get a reference to the spinner for categories. Okay. And now we'll say populate the spinner from our uh, plant service. Works the very same way. SPN category dot set adapter. Okay. New array adapter. String. And then open. And this is one of our friends, the anonymous inner class. The context, which is this. How do we want it to represent one line at a time? So Android dot r dot layout sorry dot simple drop down item one line and then finally plant service dot this time get I'm sorry fetch all categories and there we go now our screen is set up so that we have our autocomplete text working and our spinner the only trick now is that we have to invoke this screen from our finder screen, from our GPS finder screen. For that, we need to understand what an intent is, and that's what comes next. An intent is basically uh, an indication that we want to do work. And with intents, we can either be kind of vague about what we want it to do and let it pick the best choice, or we can use what's called an explicit intent, which is where we say, this is the activity that we want to do next. Okay? In our case, we use an explicit intent because we're going from one activity to another. Okay? Now, for that, we need an activity, which we have. We have the location find and also the plant search. And we have to define that activity in androidmanifest.xml. So let's do that now. I'm going to go back to Eclipse, make sure I've saved everything. I'm going to go now to Android Manifest. Okay, let it hourglass for a second. And on this screen, application, that looks good. I'm going to go to Application Node and I need to choose Add. Add and I'm going to choose Activity. Okay. And for activity name, I'm going to choose Browse. And here I'm going to say uh, Plant Search Activity. And I think we're all set here. We're looking pretty good. And now I simply need to choose Save. So that registers that registers my activity uh, with, with the Android Manifest. Next, I simply need to make the intent to call this activity. So I go back to the plants, uh, I'm sorry, I go back to my, uh, one second please, Com plant places UI, go to my location finder, okay. And now remember a while ago in the last recorded lecture we started this fine specimen and we didn't do anything with it. That's because we had to go make the layout and the activity and everything that supports it. Now we're ready to do something. So I'm going to say intent plant search intent equals new intent. Now what I pass to this is I pass the current context, which is this, and then an identifier for the class that I want to reach, the activity that I want to reach. So I'll say plant 
search activity dot class. It will use that to go through the Android manifest and see exactly which activity to pull up. Control Shift O to organize imports with intent. And now what I'm going to do, the next method is start activity for result. Okay, plant search intent, comma one. What this means is I want to go to another activity and when that activity is finished, I want to receive the result back on this initial activity. Okay, so create an intent to navigate to the next screen. Okay, invoke that intent and indicate that we wish to receive a result. Okay, at this point, cross your fingers, we should be all set. I'm going to save and I'm going to start the debugger. That will take a few moments, so I'm going to pause this recording and let the debugger start. I'll unpause once we have the debugger running. Here we are, the debugger started, and take a look. I choose Find Specimen. It'll take a moment, and then it's going to go to my plant search screen. For genus, I type A, B, and we need to be patient. It's a little bit slow, uh, but, well, not too bad. We see that it started to populate with my autocomplete, the ones that started with A, B. If I change to A, C, I think I put Acer in there. Maybe I did. There we go, Acer. It has my autocomplete. For category, I click on the spinner for shrub, and this should give me a drop down. Sure enough, sure enough, they're all my categories. This is probably well worthwhile to put in the debugger and actually watch it work. So I'm going to close this now, and once again, I'm going to set some breakpoints on find specimen within location finder activity. So I simply right click, choose toggle breakpoint. Also, I'm going to go to our plant service stub, and I'm going to set a breakpoint on fetch all genus, fetch all categories. In the plant search activity, I'll go to the on create, toggle a breakpoint there. I'm going to start the debugger again, which will take a few more moments, so I'm going to pause this and then come back as soon as the debugger is started. Okay, the debugger started, and as my British friends would say, let's have a go at it. I'm going to choose find specimen. Now you can't see this, but on my Windows taskbar, Eclipse is now blinking orange. I'm going to say yes, go to the debug perspective, and we see, as soon as I rearrange it, that sure enough I have a mint green line here. If I choose F6, which is the step over key, and then F8, which is the play key, it's going to redirect from the location finder screen to the plant search screen. I'll go ahead and choose F8 now. It doesn't take long and we get to the plant search screen and now our plant search screen is going to start to render itself. So I'm going to choose F8. Oh shoot. Sorry, I meant F6, but it's okay. I choose F6 to go line by line and we see right now it's creating the genus autocomplete text adapter, pre-populating with my stub information. And then after that, it's going to create this spinner and all of the information that's going to go into the spinner. So we F6 through that, finally choose F8, and that will finish our, our debug session ourselves. We come back and we see that the screen is rendered. I can type AB, and it will start to autocomplete for me. It is a little bit slower when I have a breakpoint actually set, but as soon as it recognizes the AB, there we go, there's my autocomplete text. So we're at about 45 minutes for this lecture, plus 30 minutes for the previous lecture. I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. We'll put this information on quiz three. So I'm going to upload this and make quiz question suggestions for quiz three. And uh, we'll think of some good questions and we'll throw this on that quiz. Uh, next lecture, we'll look a little more at user interface. And we will also take a look at uh, more doing more with our interface. I suppose we could go back and probably update our scrum board as well. So uh, how do we do today? Let's see. Well, it looks like I scrolled around a little bit. Use advanced view components drop down box. I think we'll move that to done. I'm pretty happy with how we did that. So we're going to move that to our done column. See if I can resize this so we can see the whole thing. 
Define XML layout, yeah, I think we did pretty well there too. I'm going to go ahead and move that to done. Maybe a little bit more to do, but I think we've done a pretty good job there. So we'll move that to done. Create interfaces and stub implementations. We do have some more work to do there, so we'll leave that in progress. Okay, so still up to do. Uh, create a plant, well, create a plant search screen. We started that, we'll move that to in progress. We still need the results screen. We still need to do the actual online lookup, and then we need to do GPS. That'll put us in a pretty good position for this quarter. So, if you're thinking of quiz question suggestions, some good things to think of. Think about the Java doc we talked about. Think about use of interfaces, nesting layouts, what a root element is. With layouts, typically we won't use uppercase in the name of the XML file as well, so that's a good true or false. Okay. You could think about what a scroll layout is, how extends works, spinners, how they work, what an array adapter is, what an autocomplete text is. Plenty of good information for our quiz. So think of some quiz question suggestions and fill out quiz question suggestions number three. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.